Okay, so the next thing we're talking about is play. Play is another very important function of the hypothalamus, and play is extremely important. It might seem surprising to think that play is important, but we actually need it for survival. So when we look at mice, as you can see in the picture, the two mice are playing. The way that the two mice play, the way that mice play, is that they will kind of wrestle. They will have this little bit of a play fight, and the purpose of the game, they have these games and they have rules of these games, the purpose of the game is for one mouse to make the other mouse give up, to push the other mouse down and hold their paws down, and they win. So, if you keep a mouse, a baby mouse, in a cage and you don't allow the mouse to play with other mice or even just to be around other mice, that, mice is, that mouse is probably going to die. Mice, as well as all animals, need to be around other animals. They need to play, they need to interact with other animals. Irene. to understand that even with their games they have certain rules so here's an example right if for example you have two mice and the two mice are going to play with each other if the mice have the same if they are the same size when they play with each other they're just it's a 50 50 chance one mice one mouse might win the other mouse might win their chances are equal because their size their sizes are the same but if you have two mice who are going to play with each other as i said they have certain social rules if one mouse is bigger than the other mouse maybe one mouse is about 20 percent bigger than the other mouse the rules are this the bigger mouse is not going to or the bigger mouse is probably not allowed to ask the small mouse to play with him it's the small mouse that will ask the bigger mouse to play the second rule is that when they play the big mouse now, you would think, okay, because it's a big mouse, of course the big mouse is always going to win if they're wrestling. The bigger one has an advantage. It's going to win the small mouse every single time. But you know that if, if you lose a game, if you're playing with someone and you always lose the game, you're probably not going to want to play with that person after 5, 10, 20 times. 
So in these interesting rules that the mice have when they play, the big mouse will let the small mouse win at least 40% of the time. Because the big mouse knows if I don't let the small mouse win, the small mouse will not ask me to play and I cannot play and I will, not, I will have nobody to play with. So if I let the small mouse win, sometimes the small mouse will continue to ask me to play and we can both enjoy. It's, it's, it's fascinating that they have these kinds of rules. Irene. If we look at human beings, there's another interesting thing here where, where young children have to play. We call it socialization. Socialization is where you learn social rules. You learn how to interact with other people. Now, when a child is very young, let's say one or two, let's say between, sorry, below the age of two, the child is socialized by his or her mother and father and grandmother, grandfather, brothers and sisters. He or she is socialized by the people around them. But after a certain age, let's say when the child is three or four, the child now has to be socialized. All children are socialized by their peers, by other children who are the same age as them. And they learn these social rules. They learn how to get along with other children by playing with these children. They learn how to make games together and they agree on these games. At first, when children play, they will play by themselves. They have these imaginary games in their head and they play. And when you watch them, you know they're in their head, they're playing, but they're playing by themselves. And then, they progress to being able to play their own game or imagine their own game side by side with another child who is playing their own game. So the two children are playing separate games by themselves, but they are kind of playing together side by side. And then the children slowly become able to communicate with each other and negotiate rules for their new game. 
they come up with these rules about what is allowed and what is not allowed and they can then agree to play based on these rules and by doing that they learn so quickly from each other how to interact how to have normal relationships how to form friendships with other children Irene If children, if children do not go through this process of learning how to play with other children, by the time the child is four years old, the child, a normal child, a healthy child, should have developed this ability to negotiate rules, create games, and be able to play games with other children. A four-year-old child should be able to play with another four-year-old child. But some children, they don't have this kind of social development. There are many reasons why. Maybe their parents don't want them to play with other children. Maybe they have some health problem and they can't get out and play with other children. Maybe they don't go to play school. They don't have brothers and sisters. Whatever it is, they like to stay at home and play computer games and read books. They like to be by themselves. The problem with this is that if mentally and emotionally you are underdeveloped, let's say your age is four years old, but you haven't learned these rules, and so mentally and emotionally you are maybe three years old, a four-year-old child, a mentally and emotionally developed four-year-old child, does not want to play with a mentally and emotionally three-year-old child. There's a big gap in their social development. A five-year-old child really does not want to play with a three-year-old child. So you can understand why play is so important. If we miss out on play, we lose so much in terms of learning social rules and learning how to develop relationships with other children or people our age. Irene. Yeah. 
或者说他有什么健康问题，他不能出去和别人玩，然后或者说他没有去上那种幼儿园，然后他没有哥哥姐呃没有兄弟姐妹。这样很多原因，但是这个孩子他到了四岁，还是没有掌握能和其他孩子一起交流、一起玩的这种技能。他更喜欢一个人待在家，然后去，比方说玩游戏，或者说他去看书，他喜欢一个人待着。啊、嗯，事实上，这个孩子的心理年龄或者说他的精神年龄，呃，是小于四岁的，他是。他的肉体是一个四岁孩子，但是他精神其实只是一个三岁小孩或者更小。那么，啊，那么，呃，一个精神年龄是四岁的孩子，也就是说，一个熟练掌握和他人就和别的小孩交流、一起玩的技能的孩子，是不愿意和一个精神年龄，呃，是三岁小孩玩，即使他们的。物理年龄都是四岁，但是他们能感觉到彼此之间不同，他是不愿意和一个精神年龄比他更小的孩子玩的。然后，如果一个精神年龄是五岁的小孩，那他是绝对不想和一个精神年龄是三岁的小孩玩的。他们之间有一个很大的，嗯，类似于代沟这种东西，反正他们之间有一个很大的区别。所以，呃，这就是为什么说，嗯，孩子就是。玩和他人交流，然后去创造这这种技能，然后这个这些事情，这个过程对孩子来说非常重要。这样。